Okay. I am recording. We have Photoshop open just straight up from opening it from your applications. Don't try to drag any files in here. We're not going to go to File Open. We're going to go to File Scripts. Load files into a stack. Then you have to actually browse for where they are. So this is where you have to know how your files are stored in your computer. The ones in question that I've been working with um, for this example are just stored on my desktop. So I have the two files that I process, not the FITS files. I don't want to pick those because those are the ones that um, Photoshop can't read. I had named them 450 and 814. So here they are, 450w.tiff and 814w.tiff. And then I press OK. And it's going to put them here. I don't change anything from the default settings. I don't need to align them, and I don't want to create a smart object. And I press OK. And then it's going to take a little bit to load these images into what are called layers. And layers are the beauty of Photoshop. Every layer can be an image or every layer can be an adjustment layer. So if you change something, you don't have to keep pressing undo, undo, undo to go back. You can just turn off that adjustment. You get a whole visual record of all the adjustments you've done. So the layers, the first step before I start adding any adjustments is I want to select all of the layers. Like right now, if I turn off the bottom layer, I still see the top. But if I turn off the top layer, I see what's on the bottom and then I could turn the bottom layer off and there's nothing there. So the way this is stacked right now are the layers, one is blocking the other, there's no blending going on. So what you would do is you have to select all layers and then we change what's called the blend mode. Instead of normal, we blend it as what's called a screen. The purpose of this is it's mimicking as if I had two different projectors shining light on the same screen, each one with one of those images. So they add together. So notice if I turn off the bottom one, the image changes in its brightness. And I can turn off the top one as well. But what's happening is their pixels are essentially adding together in a way to create a combined image. Adding two black and white images together gives you another black and white image. But if I want to make a color image, I need to adjust the individual layers with some color. So I'm going to turn off the bottom layer right now. I'm going to colorize this top layer by adding what's called a hue and saturation. What that does is it adds a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Critical step, this button right here has to be pressed because it makes this layer adjust only the image below. Then I select colorize because the whole point is to colorize a layer. I want to saturate it to 100%. I want the maximum saturation to give it as much color as possible. But I also, when I combine them, I don't want them to do any overexposure. So I'm going to drop the lightness by about 25%. And so now I have saturation 100, lightness minus 25. That's just a starting point. You might find that you want to change those things, and it's really easy to go back and change them. This is the 450 nanometer wavelength, so that's one that would look blue. So I'm going to color this with a little bit of blue, make it look like the filter would look. Um, then I can exit that. I could turn on the bottom layer. Notice how it looks kind of faint blue because I added a grayscale layer. I'm going to turn off this 450 nanometer layer. I'm going to do the same thing to the one below. So I'm going to add a hue and saturation. I press this button to create the clipping mask so that this hue and saturation for the bottom image is only going to affect that one. I will colorize it. I will bring the saturation up to 100%. And same thing. And these are just starting values. I'm going to bring the lightness down to minus 25. Now this was 814 nanometers. So what part of the spectrum was that in? Yeah, so I don't see infrared, but some of it would look red to me. Let's say I colored it how that filter actually looked. That filter would look like a very dark red. So I'm going to add that one. I'm going, to, or I'm going to make it really dark red. I'm going to see what happens when I add these two layers together now. Red plus blue gives us, yeah, purple. Galaxies don't look purple like this. So this is where I can control click or right click if you're on a PC and go to edit the adjustment. 
and then I could change the hue of it until it looks like something where I have all the detail that I want. And what I found for this one is something in the orange yellow makes it look more like a typical galaxy picture, but more importantly, it's where I get all the detail presented without anything washing out. The tonality of this is good. And so I can change it, like I can add blue to blue, it's not gonna do anything, it just makes it, oh, all blue. It can change the whole range of hues, um, but I found that for this one, for this particular image set, something in the orange yellow gives me enough contrast. And then I will exit that. The very last thing I will do, I'm gonna click my top layer so that when I add a new one, just for making this a little easier to see, I might add a brightness and contrast layer. So it puts this brightness and contrast on the very top and it's gonna affect the entire image. So let's say it's too bright. I can bring down the brightness. Let's say I wanna add more contrast or less contrast. I can adjust it in this way and I can add global adjustments that would affect all layers. And this is, this is the process. Now I have a color image. And what I would do is I would export this as a JPEG. That would be your final processed image. What about the individual images? Let's turn off one of the layers. Okay, now I'm going to export this as a JPEG as well. That would be one layer. Then I turn off that one and turn on the other one. I would export this one. So you will export images from your Photoshop file. Make sure at a whole bunch of points along the way, you save your file. So you have to save it as a PSD file. That is the default Photoshop file that keeps all of your adjustment layers. It keeps everything so you can return to it. When you turn in the project, you will turn it in as a PSD. So I will call this something like Messier 94 composite or Messier 94.psd would be all I need. And then you will, yeah, maximize compatibility, make it compatible with as many Photoshop versions as possible. And then when you submit this, I will be able to open your Photoshop file and see all of these different possible uh, images. Um, so that's that's the process. You should have at least two. Uh, some images only have two, uh, or objects only have two images. Some of them give you a whole bunch of them. And really make a compelling image that has a lot of detail. Um, so that's, that's really the whole thing. 